Everyone knows that water runs downhill. Unfortunately, it sometimes travels uphill, too. Over the years, many amber anti-lock brake system warning indicators have come on, and corrections have been attempted, only to have the same complaint on the same vehicles occur again and again. Usually, the cause is water that's traveled either uphill or downhill or both. Then, after the attempted repair, wicked its way back to the scene of the crime to turn the indicator on all over again. Hi, I'm Jim Scopolitis. Today's subject is electrical shorts to ground caused by corrosion from water or salt water. These can occur in any circuits that are exposed to water, and the greater the exposure, the more likely the problem. Wheel speed sensor circuits are especially vulnerable because the sensors and their connectors are located in the wheelhouse area where they're subject to repeated water splash. Today, we'll review the diagnosis and repair of water intrusion concerns using ABS sensor circuits as our example. Since so many Oldsmobiles now use the Delphi ABS-6 system, we'll use it for our demonstration. But while we'll focus on sensor circuits, it's true that water can enter ABS systems in other ways, too. And at the end of the program, we'll mention a couple of those, including a spot to watch on the 1999 Intrigue with the new LX5 engine. In the typical case, the customer brings in the vehicle because the ABS warning indicator occasionally comes on. Since water intrusion is so often the problem, the service consultant should always ask whether the light comes on only during wet weather or after a trip to the car wash. Let's say it's a 1998 Intrigue with the Delphi ABS-6 system and you're the technician on the job. What do you know? You observe that the indicator comes on for the bulb check then goes off as it should. So you know that the intermittent concern isn't present now. You know the indicator is controlled by the electronic brake control module, or EBCM, or in some vehicles, the electronic brake and traction control module, the EBTCM. And you know that the module turns on this indicator whenever it senses a current fault in the anti-lock brake system you know the fault is likely to be in a wheel speed sensor circuit, especially if the light comes on only in wet weather. But the module does have plenty of other circuits that could develop faults, causing it to turn on the indicator. So you won't jump to conclusions. You'll use the TEC-2 to look for ABS diagnostic trouble codes, in this case, history codes. If water is the problem, Various codes are possible, but on recent Oldsmobiles with Delphi systems, you're most likely to see a code between C1232 and C1235, indicating an open or short in one of the wheel speed sensor circuits. If you find one of these codes, you'll know a wheel speed sensor circuit is involved, and you'll know which one. Of course, without a code, you wouldn't have a clue where in the system the trouble was. But remember that there might recently have been one. These history codes are cleared after a hundred ignition cycles with no return of the intermittent. Let's say you find a history code C1234 for a short or open in the left rear speed sensor circuit. First, of course, write down the code and its history data, including the number of times it was set you suspect water intrusion at the sensor's connector, but you shouldn't disturb it yet. This kind of intermittent is often hard to diagnose because it's hard to recreate, and disturbing the connection at the sensor could eliminate your chances of making it reoccur. Besides, all you really know is that the module is reporting an occasional open or short in this circuit. You don't know whether the problem is an open, a short to ground, or a short to voltage, or a faulty module, and it could be anywhere in the entire circuit. But because water intrusion may be the problem, you should begin diagnosis by spraying salt water onto the circuit, 
in an effort to reset the code and turn on the indicator. To do that, add two teaspoons of salt to 12 ounces of water in a spray bottle, making a 5% salt water solution. This solution reveals a short to ground more effectively than water alone can do. Spray this solution onto the sensor's connector and all of its exposed circuitry until they're thoroughly wet. On this intrigue, each of the four sensors is part of the sealed hub and bearing as a single assembly. With this design, both the sensor and its toothed ring are completely hidden inside the wheel bearing assembly. On the Intrigue's front wheels, these sensors have short pigtail connectors. At the rear wheels, the connector is molded right into the dust cap. In either case, it's necessary to thoroughly spray the entire adjacent area to encourage seepage into the sensor. On some older vehicles, you may see discrete wheel speed sensors. With this type of sensor, you should thoroughly wet the sensor itself as well as all of its exposed circuitry. Next, drive the vehicle above 15 miles per hour on various types of road surfaces, over bumps, and making turns for at least 30 seconds. If the indicator light comes on, you have good evidence of a short to ground in the immediate sensor area. But whether or not the light comes on, your next step is to measure resistance in various sections of the circuit. In most systems, the wheel speed sensor circuit has three sections. The sensor itself, possibly including a short pigtail harness, a special jumper harness, and a main vehicle harness. Water may well have entered at the sensor connector, but you know not to disturb that connector yet. And, of course, there could be a short to ground anywhere in the circuit. So, for systems like this one, which include two exposed connector locations, it makes sense to check resistance the following way. First, disconnect all connectors at the module. In the Intrigue, this module is located below the instrument panel on the left-hand side. Now the entire circuit is isolated for your resistance checks. Next, disconnect the jumper harness from the vehicle harness so you can do your testing there. Here is that connector for the left rear sensor circuit on the Intrigue. Whenever you disconnect a connector in a circuit where water intrusion could be a problem, always begin by looking for signs of water inside it. Both connector halves should be dry and free of corrosion or white powdery residue. The terminals should be clean and untarnished. If both sections of this connector look good, proceed with diagnosis. At this connector, you can use an ohm meter to check circuit resistance to ground in four steps, measuring between body ground and each of the circuit's four terminals. In each case, you should see OL for out of limits, signifying infinite or nearly infinite resistance. Any resistance that's low enough to be measured is evidence that water, possibly assisted by corrosion from earlier water intrusion, has created a resistive short to ground. And this resistance may be as high as several megohms. So far, this sounds like simple diagnosis. But the fact is, too many technicians initially see out of limits, decide the circuit is healthy, and condemn the module, when in fact that OL reading is not reliable. There are two possible reasons for this. The first is that the module applies more voltage to this circuit than the meter's ohm meter function does. As a result, the slight voltage leak to ground from this kind of short may be great enough to signal a fault to the module which lights the indicator, but not great enough to be detectable by many multimeters. As a result, technicians see that out of limits when they shouldn't. Now comes the second possible hitch. The ohm meter may actually be measuring resistance even though it's displaying out of limits. 
This occurs because the ohmmeter's range hasn't been set correctly. Here's how to set the Fluke 87 meter for this kind of measurement. Set the dial to the ohmmeter function and make sure that the word auto appears at the upper left of the display. In this setting, the meter auto ranges through a wide range of resistances between low and high. If auto does not appear here, press the range button to reset the range to auto. Now touch one of the meter's probes to body ground and the other to each of the two terminals in the jumper side of the connector. Always be very careful not to loosen or deform these terminals. In a healthy circuit, you should see out of limits. Now do the same at the body side of the connector. If this auto range setting doesn't show any measurable resistance, in other words, if the meter still reads OL, you should take one more step. To be sure the meter will display the very highest resistances that it can, press the range button to leave auto range and check whether it's now specifically set to the 40 megohms range. If it isn't, press the range button until it is. Then again check resistance at the four terminals. That's the best way to diagnose suspected water contamination. Chances are you'll have found evidence of the problem and now know which general section of the circuit it's in. Specifically, of course, it's most likely to be in the jumper harness or the sensor or the connector between them. Or, because water can travel uphill as well as down, in all three. Now you're ready to disconnect the sensor connector and look inside both sections of it for signs of moisture or of the effects of past water intrusion. That moves us on to the subject of repair, which begins with an important guideline. Anytime you find any sign of water intrusion in either half of any connector in a wheel speed sensor circuit, you should assume the adjacent circuitry on both sides is contaminated and replace them both. At a sensor connection, that means replacing both the sensor assembly and the jumper harness. If you determine that only one of these parts tests faulty, the sensor for example, and you make the mistake of replacing just the sensor assembly, water that has wicked up into the jumper harness can move down again to the new sensor and cause the same complaint over and over again. To replace a jumper harness, order the specific one for the particular vehicle. Some other jumper harness might be made to fit, but it could then cause faulty signals to the module. So, water intrusion at the sensor connector can be easily corrected by replacing parts, but at the jumper's other connector, it requires wire repair. Water intrusion at these vehicle harness connectors can occur, especially if a connector is exposed beneath the vehicle, as it is in the Intrigue. On older silhouettes, there's an additional exposed connector at the rear, because the van's crossover harness for the right rear wheel speed sensor is external. Remember, if you find evidence of water in any connector, you must assume there's contamination in both directions. At this type of connection, besides replacing the entire jumper harness, that means replacing the vehicle side connector and replacing a section of the body harness with new wire. To make sure you're removing all the contaminated wire from the vehicle harness, cut the wires back an inch or so at a time until the exposed ends are a bright copper color, as bright as a new penny. Then keep cutting back several inches more for insurance and splice in new wire as necessary using crimp and heat shrink self-sealing butt end connectors and following approved procedures. Of course, to help keep water out of the circuit in the future, Splices should be positioned inside the body whenever that's possible. Here's another type of situation in which splicing is necessary. 
Instead of a jumper harness, a few Delphi systems use an extension of the main harness that connects directly to the sensor or its pigtail. These systems include the front circuits on the Alero and the Achieva. If water enters at this single connector, besides replacing the sensor, you need to replace the extension of the vehicle harness and its connector. For this kind of system, what you order is a specified repair harness for splicing into the vehicle harness. Always install at least enough of the repair harness to get the repair splice out of the wheelhouse area. The 1994 Sierra has a particular concern with water intrusion into the rear wheel speed sensor circuits. The correction calls for replacing both rear jumper harnesses and removing all other exposed harness. This repair is covered in detail in bulletin number 535013. Be sure to refer to it if you encounter this concern on a 1994 Sierra. Finally, two notes about other ways water can enter other kinds of ABS systems. These occur in systems that have the control module in the engine compartment. Occasionally, leaking windshield washer fluid has dripped down onto an ABS connector, causing that indicator on condition. So keep that possibility in mind. The second case concerns the Bosch ABS 5.3 system used with the new LX5 V6 engine in the newest 1999 Intrigues. In other vehicles using this system, water intrusion at an ABS ground in the engine compartment has wicked up to a connector between the module and the engine harness. On the Intrigue, the corresponding ground, G119, is less likely to be exposed to water. But for an ABS indicator on complaint in an intrigue with the LX5, you should remember this possibility. G119 is at the base of the left-hand strut tower, just below the cruise control module. Water intrusion is sneaky, persistent, and a big nuisance. But hey, it's only water. Keep your head above it, and I'll see you next time.